So, it is like this red right? so here here and uh, you have taken a 3 cross 3 neighborhood 3 cross 3 on top and then 3 cross 3 at the bottom right and you are kind of here and you are searching for searching above searching below and searching across right and within that you see 26 uh, kind of you know neighborhood whatever it turns out to be the maximum you take to be the to be the interest point and once you have an interest point again right you have to somehow follow you know roughly what we did earlier what is the next thing that we do we give an orientation assignment right so once this is done right what you need to do is do the orientation assignment this is done a slightly uh, i think uh, this is also roughly very similar to what we did before but then the only difference is it uses the har wavelet okay earlier because this has to do everything with a with a kind of box filter right so it uses a har wavelet okay this is done using a har wavelet so har wavelet looks like this again right the scale the size of this har wavelet right will will be a function of the scale at which you are applying okay it's not a fixed size so so you have like you know two of them one to sense the vertical and then one one other to sense the horizontal change so this will be like minus 1 1 and then whatever minus 1 1 and uh, yeah so the size is uh, scale dependent i think there is even some notion of what is the size i think uh, so the size is uh, 6 s uh, wait a minute no no 4 s so this is taken as 4 so s is your sigma okay or 4 s is a scale at which at which you found the extrema right when at whatever scale you found it so whatever is that sigma 4 times that sigma approximation of that is what will be this har wavelet okay that will be the size and always remember the hallway wavelet is such that its area and all will be 0 and so on it is actually uh, will sum to 0 its weights and all and uh, that is how it is again chosen okay so it is a function of the scale then uh, the again right I mean what you need to do is I mean you are sitting at a point and then and then you want to know kind of some orientation assignment you want to do what were we doing earlier it you know we are trying to find out the, the uh, right we would find the strength of the gradient then we will know the orientation will actually bin them right I mean something similar to that except that there are some 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 minor changes so within a circular neighbor okay okay let us not be too specific so so within a neighborhood of within a neighborhood of success around the interest point okay these are all okay success around the around within a neighborhood around the interest point the responses are weighted that means you apply the har wavelet right let us say you get an x response and then right you get a you get a you know a response along y the responses from the har wavelet the har wavelets are weighted response let us say to the har wavelets the response to the har wavelets are weighted with a gaussian all these are hyper parameters by the way with a gaussian sigma equal to 2 s So, this is only to weight. So, it is like saying that if you are farther away uh, in that uh, 6 sigma 6 s neighborhood, right, then uh, you are whatever is, is it is right that you actually contribute, your contribution should be less if you are farther away from the interest point. So, it is like a, with a Gaussian 2 s. So, maybe the guys outside you know will not even contribute far, you know, which are farther away from the center. Uh, okay, so, the response are actually weighted with uh, this one a Gaussian sigma equal to 2 s. Then the vector sums, the vector sums. So, by the vector sums, right, what they actually mean is you have the x response, you have the y response, right. 
and then of course you know you also you also have the angle right with you therefore what you do is you know you know you have a 30 degree bin i mean right, each bin of bin of is 30 degrees and uh, and all those right which which fall in that in that is orientation like 30 60 90 right so wherever you have an orientation that falls in a particular bin you just add up the x responses weighted of course by the gaussian and add up the y responses and right keep them all in in that in one bin and then go to the next bin find out what all are falling within that add up all the so do a let us say vector sum so that you have like an like an x vector sum and then a y vector sum within a bin and then and then right if you add that then you have a sum vector right i mean a resultant vector and whichever resultant vector turns out to be the uh, longest right or has the highest length or the maximum strength right in a way if you think about it as, as the kind of gradient value then whichever this is all very similar to what we did earlier there you know, we were just doing i think g x square plus g y square or something here it is like a vector sum that is the only difference and whichever gives you the longest length you believe that that is the that is the orientation that should be attributed to that interest point right ok. So, the vector sums of all the weighted gradients of all the weighted gradients all the weighted gradients in the success neighborhood neighborhood within 30 degree bins are are actually computed and uh, the orientation of the interest point is actually defined as the orientation of the the interest point is defined as orientation of the interest point is defined as the see global maximum or the or the or, or is defined as the orientation corresponding to the longest vector corresponding to the longest sum vector sum vector means the responses added along x and y okay that's the that's the orientation assignment very similar to shift but then here everything is done with oh, all this again right you can use integral images so right nowhere do they kind of except for this gaussian weighting and all that that of course you know, that is still done using traditional but otherwise right wherever possible uh, the approximation is always using like a box filter then a descriptor right sir descriptor now that uh, uh, right now that you know you know the right interest points you need a descriptor so again okay, right i'll just just tell you what it is so choose a window of size 20s again right but these are all coming from from the paper okay choose a window of size 20 s around the around the interest point and uh, and align it along the say, dominant orientation line it along the dominant. So, there right if you saw we were doing something like a difference we used to compute the difference uh, right, with respect to this uh, reference orientation here alignment they will simply ro 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 rotate the patch itself by that angle and align it along. So, this window of size 20 s right which you are actually picking right that itself is actually rotated now with respect to this orientation which is the most dominant and align it along the along the dominant orientation orientation of the of the key point of the key point of course we have not uh, talked about how to do the uh, you know rotation and all but uh, those are all straightforward things ok and uh, this region is then split into four cross four regions so this region is split just like we did there right, into four cross four sub region so whatever be the Right, depending upon the scale right, all the each sub region may have lots of pixels and so on 
So, you, so, so you have this 20 s neighborhood right and uh, around this you are kind of dividing into 4 cross 4 regions right 16 of them sub regions and uh, this is done to keep the keep important spatial information right this is again the same as in shift right we said that we will divide there also we did something like 4 cross 4 right and then and then we kind of kept the spatial information by actually taking <coughs> we had an we had an uh, we had an whatever right 8 cross 1 vector coming from each region and then we aligned them right there were 16 of them so we got a 128 vector so that 128 vector but that is a, there is a spatial alignment that you keep right it's like you go in some order and you keep that because that's the spatial alignment which you want to actually preserve so that's happening even here so so the region is uh, spread out right to keep the spatial information to actually keep this the spatial information then uh, then har for each sub region for each sub region um, har wavelet responses d x and d y responses d x and d y are computed at phi cross phi regular regularly spaced sample points. Again these are all you know as specified in the paper okay at regularly spaced intervals spaced intervals so it's like you compute dx and dy within okay this is all this is all within this sub region and again right these are again there is a gaussian weighting these are gaussian weighted that means you will have a Gaussian that's kind of dying off, right, at the at the edges. So these are again Gaussian weighted. Okay, not 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 with respect to this center. Sorry, it's with respect to this center, the the center of the 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 main interest point. These are Gaussian weighted. These are Gaussian weighted with respect to the interest point. Okay, not 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 I mean within the sub region. With respect to the interest point. I mean again. It's about how far away you are from the actual interest point, not like whether you are at the center of that sub region. Okay, then the the dx and dy are all summed up within a sub region. Are summed up. I mean, it's actually a vector sum, right? Are summed up within a sub region, and that along with magnitude of dx and dy, it right, becomes becomes uh, becomes one vector. So you have like for one sub region that right, you have dx which is a summed up value it right, computed within that sub region taking phi cross phi patches and then applying a har wavelet on that and then Gaussian weighting it with respect to the key point location then you have dx then you have dy then you have mod dx then you have mod dy okay, and that becomes a 4 cross 1 vector right for one sub region and we got 16 of them right. So since there are since there are 16 sub such such sub, sub, sub regions there are 16 such sub regions the dimension of the feature vector turns out to be 64 cross 1 feature this one a descriptor is 64 cross 1 and this 64 cross 1 is what now right you can use in order to do your matching you can say detect and match and all the invariances are all that we talked about right with respect to shift they all hold here hold right here I mean you know here also I mean again that right, you are taking you know this one Laplacian therefore illumination invariance right to a certain extent exists and this is also normalized okay and this vector is also normalized to, to actually unit length just like just as we did there normalized to unit length so as to take care of uh, take care of any sort of a contrast right a uh, non uniform illumination as well as uniform illumination to take care of that this is normalized to unit length and uh, then that is a rotation invariance is there the scale invariance is also there and therefore it right, so in a sense I mean whatever we saw in shift is all there except that this is easily a phi x speed up okay so doing all of this you still get a phi x speed up over over shift. Right, because of the because of the approximations right that were actually made using box filters see there is one more thing okay there is something called the histogram of oriented oriented gradients okay it's called the hog 
but that is very similar to whatever we have done already in terms of the orientation binning and all that except that it is actually a dense filter, it is actually a dense uh, kind of you know I mean you get dense points whereas here it you get sparse point that is the only difference but otherwise the, the idea and all that is very similar. So, I thought there is no point you know uh, spending time on that because any of you you can just read it up now that you have so much background in this feature detection and all that should be just a uh, this should be very easy right. So, uh, so I thought I will I would not spend time on hog I leave it to you to okay uh, uh, let us read it up it is very simple uh, now that I mean it is all based upon whatever you already it is much simpler than that in fact it was it was you know, originally used by this guy I mean it was actually proposed by two people okay Dalal and Triggs this is one of them is an Indian actually. So, they actually did it for you know for actually human detection you know people detection and therefore, if you look at the size and all right, it will be like it will have an aspect ratio which is like 1 is to 2 because that is all tailored towards humans, but later it is also been used for other things. So, it is very simple to understand ok. So, far less complicated than these other other descriptors you know, but it is more dense ok. So, I will leave that to you and uh, from next class right, we will start uh, geometry ok.